Hello students, hope you all are fine. Today we will continue with the chapter 9 of class 12 that is strategies for enhancement in food production. In our last class we have covered the topic animal husbandry. Now we will discuss about plant breeding. Traditional farming can only yield a limited biomass as food for human and animals. Better management practices and increase in area of land can increase yield but only to a limited extent. After India's independence, one of the main challenges facing the country was that of producing enough food for the increasing population. As only limited land is fit for cultivation, India has to strive to increase yield per unit area from existing farmland. Plant breeding as a technology has helped us to increase yield to a very large extent. The development of several high yielding varieties of wheat and rice in the mid 1960s as a result of various plant breeding techniques lead to dramatic increase in food production in our country. This phase is often referred as green revolution. Who in India has not heard of green revolution which was responsible for our country to not merely meet the national requirement in food production but also helped us even to export it. Green revolution in India was led by Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. It was dependent to a large extent on plant breeding technique for the development of high yielding and disease resistant varieties in wheat, rice, maize etc. Now what is plant breeding? Plant breeding is the purposeful manipulation of plant species in order to create desired plant types that are better suited for cultivation, give better yield and are disease resistant. In other words, we can define plant breeding as signs of changing the genetics of plant species in order to create desired plant types which are better suited for cultivation. Many present day crops are the result of domestication in ancient times. Today all our major food crops are derived from domesticated varieties. Classical plant breeding involves crossing or hybridization of pure lines followed by artificial selection to produce plants with desirable traits of higher yield, nutrition and resistance to disease. With advancement in genetics, molecular biology and tissue culture, plant breeding is now increasingly being carried out by using molecular genetic tools. If we were to list the traits or characters that the breeder have tried to incorporate into crop plants, following are the important characteristics we would list. They are high yield, improved quality, increased tolerance to environmental stress like tolerance towards salinity, extreme temperature, drought and resistance to pathogens like fungus, viruses and bacteria. Increased tolerance to insect pest. Plant breeding programs are carried out in a systematic way worldwide both in government institution and commercial companies. The main steps in breeding a new genetic variety of a crop are number one collection of variability, number two evaluation and selection of parents, number three cross hybridization among the selected parents, number four selection and testing of superior recombinants, number five testing release and commercialization of new cultivars. Let us discuss them one by one. First collection of variability. 
genetic variability is the root of any breeding program. Talking about variability in any crop species, we mean to state different varieties of any particular crop species. For example, rice has several varieties like peat and mogra basmati. In many crops, pre-existing genetic variability is available with wild varieties or wild relatives of the crop. Collection and preservation of all the different wild varieties, species and relatives of the cultivated species is required for effective exploitation of natural genes available in the population. The entire collection of plant and seeds having all the possible alleles for all genes in a given crop is called germplasm collection. Second, evaluation and selection of parents. The germplasm is evaluated to identify plants with desirable combination of characters. The selected plants are multiplied and used in the process of hybridization. Third, cross hybridization among the selected parents. The desired characters have very often to be combined from two different parents. For example, one having high protein quality may need to be combined with disease resistant from another parent. This is possible by cross hybridizing the two parents to produce hybrids that genetically combine the desired characters in one plant. This is very time consuming and tedious process since the pollen grains from the desirable plant chosen as male parent have to be collected and placed on the stigma of the flowers selected as female parent. It is not necessary that the hybrids do combine the desirable characters in first attempt of hybridization. Usually only one of few hundreds to a thousand crosses shows the desirable combination. Next. Selection and testing of superior recombinants. This step consists of selecting among the progeny of the hybrids those parents that have the desired character combination. The selection process is crucial to the success of the hybrid objective and require careful scientific evaluation of the progeny. This step yields plants that are superior to both of the parents. These are self-pollinated for several generation till they reach a stage of homozygosity. So that the characters will not segregate in the progeny. Fifth one, testing, releasing and commercialization of new cultivars. The newly selected lines are evaluated for their yield and other agronomic traits like qualities, disease resistance, etc. This evaluation is done by growing these in the research field and recording their performance under idle conditions like fertilizer application, irrigation and other crop management practices. After the evaluation in research fields, it is followed by testing the material in farmer's field for at least three growing seasons at several location in the country representing all the agroclimatic zones where the crop is usually grown. The material is evaluated in comparison to the best available local crop cultivar that is a check or reference cultivar. Let's discuss some high yielding varieties of wheat, rice, sugarcane and millet. Wheat and rice. During the period 1960 to 2000, that is after the commence of Green Revolution, wheat production increased from 11 million ton to 75 million tons, while rice production went up from 35 million tons to 89.5 million tons. This was due to the development of semi dwarf variety of wheat and rice. Students, famous Nobel Prize winner Norman E. Borlake 
at the world famous institution, the International Center for Wheat and Maize Improvement in Mexico developed this semi dwarf variety of wheat. In 1963, several varieties such as Sonalika and Kalyan Sona, which were high yielding and disease resistant, were introduced all over the wheat growing belt of India. Similarly, semi dwarf rice varieties were derived from IR8. It was developed at International Rice Research Institute in Philippines and Taichung variety native one from Taiwan. Better yielding semi dwarf variety of rice, namely Jaya and Ratna, were developed in India. Sugar cane. Students, when we talk about sugar canes, two species come to our mind from North India and South India. Saccharum barberi was originally grown in North India but had poor sugar content and yield. Tropical cane grown in South India, Saccharum officinarum had thicker stem and higher sugar content but did not grow well in North India. These two species were successfully crossed to get sugarcane varieties combining the desirable qualities of high yield, thick stem, high sugar and ability to grow in the sugarcane areas of North India. Millets, hybrid, maize, jwar and bajra have been successfully developed in India. Hybrid breeding have led to the development of several high yielding varieties resistant to water stress. Now let us talk about plant breeding for disease resistant crop. A wide range of fungal, bacterial and viral pathogens affect the yield of cultivated crop species, especially in tropical climates. Crop loses can often be significant up to 20 to 30 percent or sometime even total. In this situation, breeding and development of cultivars resistant to disease enhance food production. This also helps reduce the dependence on use of fungicide and bactericides. Resistance of the host plant is the ability to prevent the pathogen from causing disease and is determined by genetic constitution of the host plant. Before breeding is undertaken, it is important to know about the causative agent or organism and the mode of transmission. Students, some of the disease caused by fungi are rust, for example, brown rust of wheat or red root of sugarcane and late blight of potato. Similarly, disease caused by bacteria are black root of crucifer and disease caused by viruses are tobacco mosaic or turnip mosaic. Let us discuss about methods of breeding for disease resistance crop. Breeding can be carried out by either the conventional breeding technique or by mutation breeding. Now we will discuss them separately. First, the conventional method of breeding for disease resistance is that of hybridization and selection. The steps are essentially identical to those for breeding for any other agronomic character such as high yield. The various sequential steps are screening of germplasm for resistance resource, hybridization of selected parents, selection of the hybrids, evaluation of the hybrids and last testing and release of new varieties. Conventional breeding is often constrained by the availability of limited number of disease resistant genes that are present and identified in various crop varieties or wild relatives. Students, Himgri is one of the most important example of wheat variety resistant to disease like leaf and strip rust and also against hillbunt. Another important example 
is of brassica and the name of variety is Pusa swarni resistant against white rust disease. Few other important examples are given in your NCRT book which are also important for NEET exam. Next important method of developing the disease resistant crop variety is mutation. Inducing mutation in plants through diverse mean and then screening the plant material for resistance sometimes leads to desirable genes being identified. Plants having these desirable characters can then be either multiplied directly or can be used in breeding. Now comes the question, what is mutation? Mutation is the process by which genetic variations are created through changes in the base sequence within genes resulting in the creation of new character or trait not found in the parental type. Students, let us have a look on types of chromosomal mutation. They are point mutation, deletion, translocation and inversion. It is possible to induce mutation artificially through use of chemicals or radiations like gamma radiation and selecting and using the plants that have the desirable characters as a source in breeding. This process is called mutation breeding. For example, in moong bean or green bean, resistance to yellow mosaic virus and powdery mildew were induced by mutation. Several wild relatives of different cultivated species of plants have been shown to have certain resistance characters but have very low yield. Hence, there is a need to introduce the resistant gene into the high yielding cultivated varieties. All the above discussed examples involve sources of resistance gene that are in the same crop species which has to be bred for disease resistance or in a related wild species. Transfer of resistance gene is achieved by sexual hybridization between the target and the source plant followed by selection. Now plant breeding for developing resistance to insect pest. Another important cause for large scale destruction of crop plant and crop produce is insect and pest attack on crops. Insect resistance in host crop plant may be due to morphological, biochemical or physiological characteristics. Hairy leaves in several plants are associated with resistance to insect pest. For example, resistance to jesuit in cotton and cereal leaf beetle in wheat. Similarly, High aspartic acid, low nitrogen and sugar contained in maize leads to resistance against maize stem borer. Breeding method for insect pest resistance involves the same steps as those for any other agronomic trait such as yield or quality and are discussed earlier. Sources of resistance gene may be cultivated varieties, germplasm collection of the crop or wild relatives. Now plant breeding for improved food quality. More than 840 million people in the world do not have adequate food to meet their daily food and nutritional requirement. A far greater number 3 million people suffer from micronutrient, protein, and vitamin deficiency or hidden hunger because they cannot afford to buy enough fruits, vegetables, legumes and meat. Diet lacking essential micronutrient particularly iron, vitamin A, iodine and zinc increase the risk of disease and reduce lifespan and mental abilities. Biofortification Breeding crops with higher level of vitamins and minerals 
or higher proteins and healthier fats is the most practical means to improve public health. Biofortification is the idea of breeding crops to increase their nutritional value. This can be done either through conventional selective breeding or through genetic engineering. Biofortification differs from ordinary fortification because it focuses on making plant food more nutritious as the plant are growing rather than having nutrients added to the food when they are being processed. Breeding for improved nutritional quality is undertaken with the objective of improving protein content and quality, oil content and quality, vitamin content and micronutrients and mineral content. In 2000, maize hybrid that had twice the amount of amino acid like lysine and tryptophan compared to existing maize hybrid were developed. Wheat variety Atlas 66 having a higher protein content has been used as a donor for improving cultivated wheat. It has been possible to develop an iron fortified rice variety containing more than 5 times as much iron as in commonly consumed varieties. The Indian Agricultural Research Institute IARI in New Delhi has also released several vegetable crops that are rich in vitamins and minerals. For example, vitamin A and rich carrot, spinach, pumpkin, vitamin C and rich bittergourd, bathua, mustard, tomato, iron and calcium and rich spinach and bathua and protein enriched beans and garden peas. Students, somatic hybridization technique has played an important role in developing hybrid varieties of crop. Somatic hybridization is a technique which allows the manipulation of cellular genome by protoplast fusion. Its major contribution to plant breeding is in overcoming common crossing barrier among plant species and in organelle genetics and breeding. Somatic fusion also called protoplast fusion is a type of genetic modification in plants by which two distinct species of plants are fused together to form a new hybrid plant with the characteristics of both that is a somatic hybrid. Hybrids have been produced either between different varieties of same species for example potato plant resistant to potato leaf roll disease was developed through somatic fusion. The crop potato plant Solanum tuberosum the yield of which is severely reduced by a viral disease transmitted on by the aphid vector is fused with the wild non-tuber bearing potato that is Solanum brevidin which is resistant to the disease or between two different species for example between wheat and dry that is triticum and sicale to produce triticale. Students, hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.